I feel like I'm not as good as twin, twin sunflower seeds like you. You're not? Mm hmm, it does. Like, I can't spit them out. Mad a cat! Hey, why don't you make yourself useful? Hey, you're terrible. What is all that stuff? This is Ethernet cable and uh, uh, coax for like cable, mm. like TV cable, okay. and then Cat 7 I believe you. for internet. can reach it, but I don't think he can. Reach what? That drill so I could drill the hole in the bottom. Oh, and I was holding on to the bit. You gotta get some things <laughs> 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 Warm your little hiney. Is it warm in your little butt? Ooh, warm that little butt up. <laughs> don't pull your pants <laughs> <Hey. laughs> You toasted your butt? I'm Jameson. And I'm Jamie. And this is Braden and Maddie. We recently took a leap of faith, trading in our home in Georgia for some space in my parents' house. We gave up my high paying corporate job to pursue our dream of building stuff and empowering others. Whether we're building a family, building a business, building a house, or building a table, we like to do it ourselves. This is our DIY life. Hey guys, welcome to episode four of our dream house build. In this episode, we wrapped up a lot of stuff on the interior of the house. Yeah, we were getting ready for building inspection, so in order to do that, we had to knock out our wiring, plumbing, and HVAC. We also picked out our fireplace. And we had to deal with some unforeseen issues with the walkout. When it came to the electrical, we knew we didn't want to wire up the whole house ourselves, so we hired an electrician to come in and do all the rough wiring for us. That meant that we had to figure out all of our switch locations as well as our lighting locations and kind of what lights we wanted to put where. Yeah, and there was a few locations in the house, such as our bathroom, where we have wall sconces. We're not exactly sure where the lighting needs to fall, so we kind of just left loose wiring in the wall so we can pull that through when we know where things are gonna yeah. go. So once we locate it, we'll just poke a hole in the wall, grab the wires, pull it out, and then we'll have um, the perfect location for like sconces in the bathroom or pendants in the, in the kitchen. Love you. you just want to run all the wire and then go back and nail them all at once, or what? Well, I can run these and then nail them all together. Okay. Are you doing it from our bedroom or bathroom first? You could use this cord, I think and we you... ran it, and then he finally looked it we, up I think we and probably... decided that we couldn't use it. No, I think we probably could have. Mm, mm hmm Okay. But we should have probably figured that one out before we ran it through the whole freaking house. We have to run two. Well, if we can't run two out of this, we can run one, for sure. That's the good end. Do you have your little nail? You got your little nail thing? No, I don't. Can you get me my... It's a stapler that doesn't work, right? Well, I think I'm just going to pull the wire first, and then and I'll then come... And then come back and do it? Yeah. I'm not exactly hey, what sure are you doing? how to do this. What are you doing? What are you doing? Who are you yelling at? Brayden. If I put you on my shoulders, you think you could grab that drill from Daddy without dropping it? So we did some of the wiring ourselves. We actually ran low voltage wiring to all of our windows so we could have motorized lines. We also did um, cat, f or cat 7, actually, which I know is a little bit of overkill, but I wanted to go ahead and future-proof our we house. That. that seems great. Um, right. So we ran Cat 7 out to some cameras around the house, as well as uh, access points within the house. We also ran speaker wire for built-in speakers um, in the bedroom, the bathroom, the living room, the kitchen, and the covered porches. Everywhere. <laughs> so every everywhere. We could listen to music anywhere in this house. <laughs> Where would you even 
nicely hang a TV in this room. On that wall? Where the dresser in the mirror is. Is that where that's gonna go? Yeah. Why does she need a dresser in here? She's gonna have because a walk-in closet. Because we paid a lot of money for her beautiful dresser I that I cried in order to get. That thing is going in this room. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're over here today trying to wrap up the wiring and get ready for inspections and insulation. But one of the cool things that I wanted to point out in our wiring was that we went ahead and wired for a jam switch in the hall closets. And basically the way that this is gonna work is as the doors open and close, the lights will come on and off. Damn it! Four speakers in the ceiling, and then run, do like a 7.1 system, surround system, and then have two speakers back in the kitchen and dining room but also have those speakers that go to a, uh, like a source selector, so that if you're standing in the kitchen and you wanna to listen to the TV, you don't have to turn the TV volume up, you hit your selector to TV, okay. and then it plays the volume from the TV. Honey, you lost or if you me it when you said 7.1. I have no idea. So for the HVAC, we decided to go with a gas furnace for the main level, and then a radiant heat floor in the basement. My theory with that is that they will supplement one another and both of those systems won't have to work so hard. We're gonna use a tankless uh, combination water heater for, um, to heat the potable water, just the main domestic water as well, and the boiler in that heater will heat the floor, which will in turn heat the basement. One cool thing that we did with the furnace was that we, uh, we zoned the house. So basically, the house is split into two different zones. So we'll have two thermostats upstairs, one that will control one side of the house and one that will control the other side of the house. A couple other things we did was we added a UV light to the return ducting, and that's just gonna um, make for healthier air within the house. We also added a humidifier because the winters tend to get pretty, um, pretty dry up here in Michigan. So the humidifier, it's a whole house humidifier, and that'll make sure we control the moisture within the house. Since we have natural gas at the property, we went ahead and had a crew come out and run gas lines to everything that we could power with natural gas. That's the stove, our outdoor grill, our dryer, our fireplaces, as well as our hot water heater and furnace. All right, so as you can see behind us, we don't have a fireplace installed yet or even framed out for that matter. We were waiting to pick on or to pick out a fireplace and we settled on the Valor L3. It's a linear fireplace. It's really cool, it gives a little modern vibe and it's not so high so we can mount a TV a little bit lower. We're also going with the heat shift technology that they offer which basically that means that the convective heat um, that rises will go out the top and then through a vent on the top whereas the radiant heat from the from the fire itself will heat the people in front of it. So what we're doing today is we're gonna go ahead and frame it out. I've gone ahead and laid out a diagram of how I want to build the structure. We've got a, there's an opening for the fireplace that we're not allowed to have any combustible materials. So I wanna make sure that that minimum opening is there and we've got a platform for the fireplace to be mounted onto. And then above, I've gotta leave a little space for the vent, that heat shift technology vent uh, above. So that's what we're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and start on the sides, get the sides brought out, and then I'll frame up the front face of it and then hang it all together. Hey. I thought they were pouring the wall. No, they had to do something else today. What the um, so this is the bottom. Obviously the fireplace isn't gonna be this big. It's a linear one, but it, we have to have non-combustible materials within here. So the fireplace is only like this. It's a linear deal, it's like that. But we got the heat shift vent 
So this fireplace, and then this is the top of the wall, but the top. Mm -hmm. The heat shift vent is the width of these two studs here. 49, oh, it is? It's that long? It's 49 inches wide. So my question is, I gotta leave four inches for them. Got it, to a put four it inch. in. So do we want it all the way up against the top plate? Or would you want it to be shifted down a little bit? Remember, we're gonna have a TV in here somewhere. To be I would say I would want it. All the way up? Closer to the ceiling. Okay, then we'll run it all the way up and we'll just space it okay. four inches down from there and leave that open. Question for you, that uh, yes, drill sir. line for the deck. Yeah. Yeah, push up at the top. Does it look good up at the top over in your... All right, so this is the opening for the fireplace. It's an insert. So obviously the fireplace isn't gonna be quite this big. It's a linear fireplace. I'm gonna say it's like this, and it runs about, about that wide. But this is the opening for non-combustible material, so we can't frame it out with wood. All right, so we got the fireplace all framed out on the inside. Now, let me show you the retaining wall that we got poured for the front walkout basement. All right, so these are the retaining walls for the front walkout basement. We wanted to create an entryway from the front of the basement um, just because I thought it would be kind of fun. However, the problem was initially this was just dug out. So as we started entering into those freeze thaw uh, conditions that we get with spring, it started, the, the soil started to deteriorate and then back up into the basement. So after trying to fix that with the, the, tra the small tractor that we have, we kind of dug out a little trench and got the water to run away from the house, which fixed it temporarily. But obviously we wanted to get these retaining walls in as soon as possible. So the guys came out and dug the footings. They went ahead and poured those footings after we got those holes inspected. And then they came back and set up the forms the very next day and poured all the concrete retaining walls. These are 10 inch thick walls, so they will definitely be able to hold back that soil for us. And what we'll do is we'll have an IR repeater. So like up there somewhere, maybe with the thing, you'll have an IR repeater so that, what that means is that when I mean, you- You can keep saying IR repeater all you click, want. <laughs> Just When you tell click me the what remote, that thing reads the signal and it goes and sends it and then displays it again wherever your boxes are. Sure. So when you hit the remote, it just, is sending your signal to wherever Can your you box is. Can you say IR repeater one more time? IR repeater. <laughs> okay.